I've been involved in a lot of API projects, and I keep bumping into the same problem over and over and over again, and I'm tired of that, so I wanted to find a solution. The problem is that two days before lunch, if you're lucky, somebody thinks about, oh, yeah, there's laws and stuff. We need a user agreement. Uh, and then you call the closest uh, lawyer that takes way too, uh, too much money an hour, don't know technology, and comes up with a user agreement that doesn't serve anybody. That's hard to understand, that's not uh, related to an API, actually, uh, and also is quite hostile to developers in many cases. So to fix this, uh, we have done a project called Swedish API License that we're launching here today. Um, we are several parties involved in this project. Um, project management from uh, Swedish ICT Victoria, Victoria Institute. Uh, Mannerheim Svatling, represented by Anna Mirs here. Um, Samtrafiken, that represented the side um, of publishers, the ones publishing an API. Dopter, which is myself representing the developer, so the, the consumers of an API. So together we have legal expertise, technical expertise, and experience in publishing many APIs, which Samtrafiken have done on trafiklab.se. Um, all of this was financed by Vinova, um, which we're very happy about. Uh, and the re result is a free API license. Released under Creative Commons, so you can take everything we've done and do whatever you want with it. Just tell everybody that you got it from us. If you want to remix it, republish, um, take 5% of what we've done and write the rest yourself, or whatever you want to do, that's up to you. Um, the license is available in Swedish and in English, so if you're a company that has customers outside of Sweden, we have it in English as well, even if it's all according to Swedish laws. Um, we have several different business and legal uh, choices you make to kind of customize this license. So you say that, oh, I don't want anybody to be able to use my data and API for commercial purposes, then we can point you to what paragraph in the license text you take out or keep in, so you're customizing your license yourself. Um, and we're hoping that this will make everybody's life easier. We have a few requirements when we started this. Uh, personally, I had a very firm requirement, which was I should understand what it says, um, which most of the user agreements I agree with every day, uh, I don't even read and I don't understand it. Um, and it should be very flexible and yeah, we had a few other uh, requirements. The result was, of course, the license text itself, supporting documentation around it, what choices you make and why, what laws are uh, applicable in different situations and so forth. Um, and the whole, the quick choices you go through and answer, oh yeah, I want to do this, so I should use this paragraph. I don't want to do this, so I should not use this other paragraph and so forth. Uh, even if this is according to Swedish laws, I think it, has a lot of value to anybody in the world publishing API because you take out the, the details of the Swedish law, there's still a lot of thoughts behind this. We had had workshops and constant feedback from the community on how do we construct this license. What do we include in the license and what, what don't we do? Um, and then over to Anna for some of the legal details. My name is Anna Mirsch, and I'm one of the lawyers that charge way too much for a license <laughs> text. Um, and this is uh, one of the few projects that, um, in which I've been writing a license text that's not for one client. Usually there's one client that comes to us, and uh, they need a license text for um, a specific invention, or an API, or um, some intellectual property like this. Uh, and the way that we start out is that we start asking questions. What do you want to do? What's your business model? And the client replies. Um, in this case, when, when we have a text that's supposed to be um, usable for everyone, I don't have that chance. Uh, I can sit down with each person and ask these questions. So at first, we started out thinking that we would write one single text, because uh, that's what a licensed text usually looks like. But we came to the conclusion that if we don't provide different alternatives for different cho choices, um, the text will become useless in some aspects. And uh, the API publisher that wants to use this text 
uh, will not know what to do, so to say. If you uh, have a choice between, for example, allowing the data to be commercialized or not, uh, and the license will provide you with an opportunity um, uh, or only will provide you with the opportunity to uh, commercialize the data, you're not sure how to word a text that says that you cannot. Um, so this is the background to why uh, we structure the license with different alternatives. Um, when looking at the web page, uh, it might look a little bit confusing with different texts. There's also certain brackets that you're supposed to fill out yourselves. Uh, but the reason for this is simply um, to customize the text as much as possible. You should be able to make your own text on the basis of this draft without having to um, exclude certain parts uh, that you don't know that you should exclude or add certain parts that you don't know that you should be adding. Um, and so an example of this is this text where you can see there's an alternative one and there's an alternative two. Uh, it's uh, regarding just what we've been talking about now about commercial purposes um, and what that actually means to the API publisher or the API provider that is using the license. So depending on how you want to structure this for your API, you will choose one alternative uh, and delete the other. Um, when we've been talking about the different selections to be made, um, we have, so to say, taken two different roads or been talking about two different subjects. Me being a lawyer, I think a lot about mandatory laws and what will have to be in a license in order for it to fulfill mandatory laws. And actually, when it comes to an, an API license, there's not that much that's provided in mandatory law uh, that you need to take into the text. It's more um, that you need to take certain mandatory laws into consideration. And this, especially if you want to be an API publisher who's actually fair to your users, we think that you should inform them about um, certain circumstances or certain obligations which they may have under mandatory law um, so that they know this using the API. Um, the second aspect of all of this, and that's where Andreas and also Sam Trafiken and the other guys in the project um, had a lot of input, is the business perspective. Uh, how do you design a license in order for it to fit your business model? So when you look at the license text and when you look at the web page where the license is presented, you'll be able to find some texts and some guidelines to the provisions in the license text that's related to mandatory law uh, and some text uh, and guidelines to the business choices. Um, and here's one example of um, a choice that's influenced by uh, provisions of mandatory law. Um, if you, as an API uh, provider, uh, send out data um, that contains personal data, uh, your users that receive this data uh, will have certain obligations under data protection law. And it's not a mandatory requirement under Swedish law to inform your users about this, but since our goal was to write a fair license and uh, a license that keeps your users well informed, this is uh, one choice that you can make to um, inform your users about this. Um, another um, section of the uh, license text that's more influenced by mandatory law and things that you would actually need to take into consideration in your license is that if you are uh, closing this agreement with consumers, you can't just change the agreement as you like without notifying them and giving them the chance to decide whether they want to stick with the service once you've changed the agreement. Um, so that's the reason why we put in wording like this. Uh, when it comes to the business-related choices, it's maybe easy to think that there's uh, a large separation between the law and the business, but working as a business lawyer, I know that's not the case. Uh, when it comes to liability, for example, and what liabilities you uh, can accept to take on, uh, this is a business choice, uh, but of course the wording in the license will need to be adapted to uh, legal practice and how this will be interpreted under law. Um, so when it comes to liability, for example, you would have the choice between uh, 
providing a warranty of some kind where you as an API provider would uh, describe the, the warranty that you're actually willing to give, for example, a certain SLA, or you can choose option number two, which is pretty much no warranty whatsoever to any extent. Okay, so we've released this under Creative Commons uh, attribution, so please feel free to use it in your own projects. Um, I see two main kinds of users. One is the individual developer, smaller company that uses this license as is, customize it according to our choices, and use it as we, as is, which it's absolutely uh, made to. It's made to be used that way. Another one is for a bigger company that takes this as input to their own lawyers to customize it, to change things so it fits their particular purpose. But then you still have something to base your work on. This is a lot of, a lot of time and effort that's gone into to make this license fair to both the user of the API and the publisher of the API, and to make sure that we get all the applicable laws in there and so forth. So I think it's a good start for any big company that needs a license. So start using it. Opelicense.se, or API license.se, I guess. Uh, it's all there. It's uh, all free to use. If you want to copy the website, that's also open source. So go ahead, use it. Let us know that you use it, and we're happy to, to promote you. Because I think uh, a fair license <clears throat> that both developers and companies know about will, uh, will make it possible to publish more APIs and get more users. And no longer do you have to read through a 57-page uh, license agreement that you won't read and agree to whatever. This is easy to understand for even me. So I think you can figure it out too. Thank you very much for your time. <clears throat>
And this is not according to some international law. This is Swedish law, but it's written in English, so it's still understandable for everybody. We think that's the best, uh, the most useful we could uh, make the license. So it's for Swedish companies that have international business. Did that answer your question? Yes. Yeah, good. Thank you. Any other questions? I think we had one here. Yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Did you use uh, attribution in within this license as well? Um, as an, an option? Mm. Oh, you mean for, for intellectual property that's being spread, so to say, through yeah. the license? Yeah, that's one way to do it. And this is an example of one of the brackets. So there's, there's an alternative saying, pretty much in short, uh, the data that's spread here um, is... Uh, comprised by licenses, either your own uh, licenses or third-party licenses. And there's a bracket where you should describe what license terms apply to the data. And for example, then attribution would be such license terms. Um, and, and I do realize that this puts a lot of responsibility on the API provider. You need to be aware what data you're spreading. But uh, there's there's no magic wand. There's no license that will, uh, so to say, allow you to spread data as you like, even though it's in breach of intellectual property rights. So so that's our basis of the license, so to say, that an, an API publisher uh, should be informed of, of what he or she uh, is giving out to the users. Okay. Thank you very much once again.